time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. My host, Mike Adams, sitting outside watching it rain with Dan DeFaw at Spot Shooter Archery, and Mara Doherty is here as well from Ohio. What's going on, guys? Not much. Having a good time here at Bowfest. The rain put a little damper on things. No pun intended. Yeah, and somebody said, you know, again, we bring the people up from Ohio like last year. And it rains. And it rains. What's up with that, Mark? I, I don't know. Maybe it's a Buckeye thing. Maybe it's a Wildcat 4-H archery thing. I don't know. They were here last no, year, No, that's too. true. Oh, see, she's trying to brush it off she's, onto the 4-H yeah, now. Yeah, she's throwing, throwing daggers out there. Yeah, pointing the finger at other people. Uh, 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 let's see how this is going. Yeah, you can see where that's going. But you know what? We're glad to have you back up here. Yeah. When when Cody and I showed up, we were, well, it didn't start till 10 technically. We were supposed to be here around 9, but we, we, we rolled in at like 9.30 this morning. It was a four-hour drive. It was an early morning, but, I mean, it was hopping. The place was. It was. It was like, you know, it looked like it had been open for hours. The sun was shining, and there were people everywhere, and bows going out the door left and right. So it was. They were busy inside the store, it, that's for sure. Definitely. I know Cody and I wandered in there around 11 o'clock. We couldn't even move. so. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, and that's a good thing for Jim. You know, this is his 10th year running, and uh, it's his biggest yet. So. Yeah, definitely a bigger turnout than last year. I know we had rain, but last year was Cody and I's first time up here. And last year my parents came. They couldn't come this time. They wanted to, but... Long story, we're moving, and they've got a lot of packing going on because we're moving out of our house at the end of the month. So they couldn't make it up this year. But, but yeah, this this year was definitely more crowded, um, even with the rain, than it was last year. That's awesome. Well, we had you guys up here, I want to say June. third week of June, somewhere right around there, second, third week of June. And uh, we took the fishing trip, and we talked about that on, on a couple shows. Uh, what you been up to since then? Cody and I have fished a couple local tournaments in Ohio since then. Uh, we did make one trip up to Lake Erie a few weeks ago. We wanted to plan on smallmouth in all day that day, but uh, by the time we got on the water, we got on the water pretty early, but they were already like four footers rolling in. So uh, we largemouthed around East Harbor and ended up going out smallmouthing for like an hour and a half later in the day when the waves laid down. But other than that, we've been prepping for deer season we've both been working a lot um i need to get out and get my stands hung um i've got a horse show coming up in two weeks so that's fun i'm getting ready for that um so we've been staying busy as well as me i'm packing my room up and everything for the for the move i'm going to move in with my grandparents for six months while my parents build their house sounds like what dan and i've been up to i mean it's just one thing after another, oh, after another. it's been crazy no kidding uh but you know, let's let's take a step back a little bit. You, you talked about going up Lake Erie. What I saw some video of you sleeping on the boat under an umbrella. I didn't see any fishing going on. How's that work? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we weren't in a tournament. Um, I did do a lot of fishing that day. Um, but I, it's a redhead thing, and I try to keep the sun off me as best as I can. I wear the Cabela's guide wear long sleeve button up shirts and the long the long guide wear pants. And I mean, I get burned easy. Even with seventy feet uh, FPS sunscreen, yeah. and Danny, I, I know, uh, I know you know. Yeah, what that's we know like. that. So, um, I was tired. We'd been up late the night before, driving up to the lake, and I was like, hey, I'm just going to take a nap here. We weren't. That was early in the morning. We really weren't catching fish that around that time, so it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> well, you know what? You, you mentioned some products there from Cabela's, oh, the the guide wear uh, that you were using to keep the, the sun off. Why did you choose that product? Uh, what's behind that? The guide wear stuff at Cabela's is awesome, and they only have it um, during the summertime, and you can get it online year-round, but that stuff has built-in sunblock UV protection, and initially when you get the guide wear, at least the fishing gear, um, it ha- it's waterproof. If you get wet or rained on, the water just rolls off. Now, eventually, as you wash the clothes, that will uh, disappear and you'll have to reapply. We sell a product. I can't think of the name of name of it off the top of my head at Cabela's, but we do sell a, like a, a product where you can reapply that. So that's nice. If you get caught in the rain, uh, if you don't have your rain gear with you, I mean, no, it's not waterproof, but it does shed the water off of you pretty well if you're up to date. So is that what Cody was using when uh, we were up there fishing? 
That was actually, this is a sore subject, that was actually an Under Armour shirt that he had on. But it, it does, it, that shirt also had the UV ray protection bedded in it too, but that's an Under Armour fishing shirt that he had on. That Talking about the white and blue and gray one, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next segment. Danny and I will give a take on that. Yeah. Because <laughs> people have been asking us about that, and it's been a hot topic of late. So uh, I, I think Cody needs to go get him some uh, of the Cabela's uh, was it, you said guide guide wear? Okay. Yeah, he needs some guide All wear. Right. We, we need to get him on that and get him straightened out there. But uh, uh, talking about that, the clothing you were using, um, what's the price point on that? Um, it varies. I think the pants were around fifty dollars. Um, they're a super super light breathable pant, and if they get wet, they dry within five minutes. I mean, they're awesome and they're they're stretchy. So for especially in a bass boat, sitting down, getting back up, sitting down, getting back up on changing spots. You know, they don't, I used to wear jeans a lot when we'd fish and, you know, especially if jeans get wet, they'll like bind to you and they're real uncomfortable to get up and down in. So they're probably one of the best fishing purchases I've ever made other than gear. Sweet. Uh, something I might have to take a look at next year. Yeah, yeah they got awesome. it at the especially, Saginaw store. They got it right in the front there. Okay, especially it. since it's uh, something that, uh, that blocks the, the UV rays and stuff like that because I'm concerned about that from all the sunburns I got when I was a kid, of, you know, skin cancer type stuff. No kidding. I'm all about that. That's for sure. Being the redhead like you, Mara, we know that. Okay, so okay, so you, you're protected from the sun, but you, you still fall asleep in the boat. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a pass on that. But uh, so comfy you fall asleep. <laughs> there you there go. There you go. There you go. It, so comfy you can sleep in them. Sleep in them. There you go. Um, how, let's jump ahead to upcoming deer season. You don't have stands hung yet, but... Uh, have you, have you seen anything yet that kind of piques your curiosity? You got anything that, you, you know, you can talk about or are you just kind of getting into things right now? I've had a couple game cameras up, two of which are very old, and I was kind of testing them to see if they'd be working this weekend, or this year, I mean, and they are not uh, producing the pictures that I want, so I, I think I might toss them at the end of the season. Um, but I do have one camera up, a Bushnell, that has taken fantastic pictures. Um, and I checked it last, I let it go for about a month and I checked two weeks ago and I had five different bucks on there, not the big one that I had in July, but there are five new ones on there, not nearly as big, but that's a good sign that there's a lot of young, young stuff running around and so many does. I mean, I have does, I actually have an old doe, um, with a scar on her side. I don't know if she'd been shot before or what, but she has triplet fawns this year. Um, so she's definitely one that I'm going to have my eye on for, um, doe management purposes because she's an old deer and the older they get typically they'll have more and more babies and that so that's just population control and like I said she's kind of scarred up she's kind of gross so yeah sounds like a promising season coming up here hopefully absolutely yeah maybe we can tempt you to come up to Michigan a little bit maybe and help us with a little bit of population control up in uh, our neck of the woods so uh, now Cody's he's over there talking right now he's, he's doing his thing but uh, give us a lowdown on what he's been up to He's been fishing like crazy. Um, he, his dad actually has one of his beagles bred, and she's due to have puppies this Thursday. And his, uh -oh. his parents are actually going to Baton Rouge, if I said that right, down to help with the flooding this week. So he's on puppy duty. When the puppies arrive, he's supposed to be there to help <laughs> with labor and all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah, other than that, he's been fishing, and, and he just got – he just got official with his bait company. He actually has a name and an LLC now, and he's got his first uh, thousand baits sold. So he's working on making orders, and he's selling them across the country via Facebook. And I mean, for having his first thousand sold within a week, I'd say he's doing pretty good. Can we give the official name and make an announcement here on the show about that? We sure can. Uh, the official name is Champion Baits. Um, and he's running it. I think he's got him on a couple of tackle pages on Facebook. I'm not sure yet. We'll, once we get the logo official and ready, we'll have it up on the Upmore Journal Facebook page so you guys can check it out there. Um, but the logo is not quite finalized yet, and we'll get some T-shirts made and all that fun stuff and hats. But until then, look for it on some tackle sites or message Cody or I, and we can hook you up with some baits if you're interested. And go over to Facebook, over to uh, Team Kickerfish, and you can check them out there That's as well. That's right. So. Well, it sounds like you guys have been busy, been hitting it hard, and uh, going to have a, a hopefully a, a good promising uh, fall here for deer Some good as well. reports from Ohio. Yeah. Is uh, Cody, is he wrapping up his fishing this fall, or has he got some fall tournaments he's going to be doing? 
Uh, he might be doing one more open tournament. Um, I know we have one more circuit tournament, but I don't think we're fishing it. I, it's end of the year, and we're not in the points race anymore. Um, and I've got a horse show that I'm planning on going to that day on September 10th. But I think he is going to do a fall open maybe on Allen Creek or so. So. Okay, so you got a horse show coming up. Um, do, you, do you need a jockey for that little mini horse? I can send Danny down for you. Yeah, I think he fit on there pretty well. I mean, she's only 29 inches tall. <laughs> Oh, I might need a stool, too, right, to get yeah, up there? Yeah, we'll get, we'll get, we'll, you, you'll be tall in the saddle. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Again, thrown under the bus. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we're going to step up. We're already outside. We're going to step under the tent here and try to stay dry. We'll wrap up this segment. But, uh, you know, the one thing Ma- Mara had mentioned, uh, you know, the, the Under Armour stuff, uh, we're going to come back and give a little take on, on our feelings on this whether and see if Danny and I agree on, on how we feel about this. So I'll, I'll, I'll I've been thinking about it a lot here for the last week and a half, so we'll see where that goes. So we'll step outside, and we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Welcome back, second segment of the show. We're sitting out here at Spot Shooters. It has quit raining. It has, for now. You know, uh, before we let Mara go, um, we actually uh, talked about the last segment. She brought up the Under Armour issue. She did. So, uh, well, actually, she has brought up the word Under Armour. Yeah. And so that, that's got to like have been in the news in the social media world right in the last week and a half so before we let her go back to ohio i think uh we we ought to get her take on it you know we talked about this in the break and she's going to give her take and then the next two segments after that we'll give her our take right exactly so uh, i've got a customer i need to go take care of so you guys take the show away all right we will now go away walk away See, this is the best part. I will part. be checking this before we put it out, so if you guys do anything bad, I'm going to be editing. Go away. Uh-huh. Go away. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> See, now it's our show. Yeah, we the, can do anything we, we can want. Do, look at him run. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever seen him move up. <laughs> I don't think so either. Wow. All right, Mara. So, unless the world's been under a rock in the last week and a half. Right. And you know what? This Under Armour thing has kind of blowed up. Uh what is your take of what you know of it as of today? Okay. Um, disclaimer here before I start talking about my personal opinion about the situation. Um, I do know Josh and Sarah Bomar personally. Josh is my boyfriend Cody's cousin. Um, I was at their wedding. Um, so this kind of hit, hit home on a personal level um, to see something like this happen to somebody that I know, not just somebody out in the industry. Um so the whole thing, you know, Josh. So, so, so right there, this is actually, as opposed to Mike, Mike's take and, or my take that you're going to hear later in the show, this is a, a personal side of your take to it, which is, right. you know, this is kind of going to be good. Yeah, so for Josh to, I mean, they do crazy things. I mean, they, they've hunted with Eva Shockey, and Sarah was working on a women's line with Under Armour. And for Josh to legally take this bear um, in Canada to have repercussions on Sarah, I just think And all is, Sarah did was video it, yeah, right? Yeah, she wasn't even hunting. She didn't even, I mean, she didn't throw the spear. Whether you believe in spear hunting or not, um, it was still a legal hunt. Bottom line, there was nothing wrong with it. 
If it was illegal, yeah, I could see the outcry and why people were upset, but it wasn't. So for me, it's hard to see why people think that it's such a big deal. Um, and so for Sarah not even to be involved in the killing, she was just there videoing and being there for support for her husband. And the fact that Under Armour just dropped her like it and, was nothing. And you know what? Uh, this was done in June. It was. And yeah, it, it didn't come out till August. Yeah, I mean, the video's been out for a while, but I guess the wrong people didn't see it back in June. I guess it kind of resurfaced. That's that's the only thing I can think of. The only thing I can think of is how it worked was they did it in June. The video came out in August. And then, like you said, somebody caught wind of it. Yes. And then the, the, the protest started. Right. And, I mean... The nasty things that I, I mean, everybody, including me, what, what, what I was reading online about this is just incredible. But what was incredible also was the amount of support that people were giving them um, because of what Under Armour did. I mean, if you're a, I know Under Armour Hunt is just a small portion of their income, but for them to not support hunting, if they're supposed to be a hunting apparel company, that just, I cannot, wrap my, your mind? I cannot wrap my mind around that. In, um, in, instead of standing uh, like what we've heard this week in, in other uh, talks is uh, companies that are standing with the hunters. Right. This, this company not only stood behind the hunter, they pushed the hunter off the cliff. Exactly. And the they have lost so much support. All those videos going viral of people burning their apparel and that kind of stuff. And people saying, oh, I'll never buy Under Armour Hunt ever again. And it's just, I mean, it, I think it's great. I, I mean, I don't really have Under Armour hunting gear. I never I never really liked it. I thought it was always kind of pricey, but I won't be buying any in the future if you that know, tells you how I feel. Exactly. And, well, and plus, this, like we've talked about now, uh, on a personal level, you've seen, you know, she wasn't involved except videoing it. Yeah. And this has got to totally crush her. Oh, yeah. She said that she, I remember she tweeted and she said, uh, the Bomar, or I am no longer affili- affiliated with Under Armour. I will write a blog about it when I quit crying. Right, exactly. You know, she probably put her heart and soul. She did. In, in the- and she was designing women's Under Armour line. The, she and Eva and a bunch of other Under Armour girls were in charge of designing a women's line. And, I mean, she spent thousands and thousands of her own dollars of her own money to buy the Under Armour gear. They didn't pay her anything for what she was doing for them. See, and that's the thing. And she pours her heart and soul Absolutely. out of this. Absolutely. And she's, and an she's guilty by association. Right. Because she was there. Because she was there. And she's married to Josh. And what happens is it gets on Facebook. Uh, some people start hitting Facebook, uh, hitting Under Armour up. Right. You know, you got to do something about this. You got to do something. And you know what? It's, from what I can tell from the, what we've heard, from when it came out to when they dropped them, it was pretty quick. It wasn't, a, they didn't think about that decision. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, it was like, I'm pretty sure it was less or very close to 24 hours. Right, by I, Friday morning of that week is when they came out with the statement says, we don't, we uh-huh. don't support this, blah, 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 we've mm-hmm. dropped her. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, man, really? Do, I wonder, behind the scenes, we don't know, right. if they know the whole story. Or was this just a, on social media, look what's happening, we got to do something about it? I I don't know. To me, the way it came off is they just assumed, oh, you know, since Under Armour Hunt is not our biggest seller, you know, just straight Under Armour apparel apparel is, I don't think they cared. They said, well, "Well, we can lose some, you know, some customers in the hunt section because most of the people who don't hunt aren't buying the hunt clothes. Exactly. In, in In the big scheme of business... The, the, the brand name Under Armour, the hunting line, probably it's is... minuscule. Right. I mean... Exactly. If you want to look at numbers. Exactly. And what they deal with on other avenues of uh, hunting is very minuscule. Yep. Um, okay, so we've got that take. I got a question for you. What's your take on the other Under Armour people that are supported by Under Armour? Uh they're being quiet they are and i think or, or i shouldn't say they're being quiet because i know the juries came out with a statement they did yeah and but I've, I've seen i haven't seen anything from the lees and tiffany's uh, yeah i haven't either right so i was kind of what, what's your take on that i don't know if 
if, 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 if it's another money thing and they're scared if they say the wrong thing, they might get dropped as well or I don't know. I mean, they have a lot of backing in the hunting world, but it seems like everybody, every hunter now, whether you're a bow hunter or rifle hunter or whatever, you're kind of under fire right now with, with everybody. Right, exactly. And you know what? And I do understand that uh, for those people that are sponsored by, uh, they, they've got contractual exactly uh, things they have to abide exactly. by. So um, in that aspect, I can understand that mm-hmm. because, yep, they signed a contract. Just like you, you, you sign a contract in the professional sports or mm-hmm. whatever you do, mm-hmm. uh, you, you have to abide by your contract. And it's right. only, it does you good to do that. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's been interesting that uh, the juries did come out and say something. And um, to me, it was a, uh, however you want to say, a, a business statement. Mm-hmm. You know, It was, yeah. A lot of big-time hunters and big-time outdoor industry, you know, film people have came out to kind of bash Under Armour. And, you know, why aren't you standing behind the people that are promoting your products? Exactly. And that that's... That's a tough pill they to swallow. They kind of shoved Sarah under the bus, especially because she wasn't even the one who, who yeah. made you know who made the kill with the spear. I think I get to me that that's kind of the more important of the the whole thing was is she was she's guilty by being behind the camera. Yeah, it's almost like they said, okay, you shot it with camera, right. you shot it, your, or you right. speared it yourself. Right, and it's. Uh, and I mean, yeah, Josh had some Under Armour gear on, but I mean, he was by no means affiliated with them. He was just morally wearing it for Sarah's support. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, I'm glad to get, it, it, it's interesting how big this world is, but yet small sure. that you're actually, I know it's kind your of boyfriend crazy. is related to him. Kind of crazy. You yeah. know, it is kind of crazy. Cause I met, I mean, I met Josh and Sarah like probably close to three years ago, you know, before they were, I mean, they were, they were in the industry. Don't get me wrong, but before they kind of went famous, I mean, they're not, crazy famous by any means right well now they are after well, this whole yeah, incident yeah but, but you know before they, they uh is is what i was talking about so i knew them like i said i mean i still know them on that personal level um and i haven't seen them since then so i'm kind of excited to talk to them in person <laughs> about it. i don't know if it's a good way to become famous or a bad way to become uh, famous well if you got the right people backing you i could see it. like tim wells you know he's a spear hunter and, and he he had this big whole spiel on it oh there's been a few that's another thing that i've seen come out in the last week and a half or so that um a few people have come out uh doing live facebook feeds yes you know giving their take on it yes and a couple and i can't remember the gentleman's name that 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 talked about it but he said this isn't it's changed this whole industry has changed yeah and uh unfortunately um so another question as we talked just came up uh have you seen any uh within the last week uh I don't know how much you've been at work. Have you seen any repercussions at work of the label? You know, I don't know if this has any influence on the whole Under Armour, Josh, Sarah, Bomar thing or not, but there was a huge clearance rack of Under Armour hoodies. Like, or not necessarily clearance, but a huge sale rack. Some of the stuff on there was clearance, and I was like, hmm, I mean... Coincidence? Have they, have they noticed sales have dropped within the past two weeks, or is that just the coincidence that Under Armour regulated that sale? I don't know. Do you think uh, this is going to blow over? It eventually will. All this stuff, all this stuff eventually will. Okay. Yeah. So, so your thought is that it's it, if you let. I mean, this started out. This has probably been two weeks. We're into this now. Right. It uh, is kind of blown over. I mean, look at Cecil the Lion. I mean, that pretty much blew over. I mean, yeah, of course, there's still people that are mad, and that's the sore subject for a lot of people. But it blew over. You don't see the memes and stuff like you do on Facebook now that you did back no. when that happened. You know what I mean? So Ex- I think exactly. it'll kind of blow over, and people will kind of forget about it. But I think that Josh and Sarah will. We'll get more backing and we'll be more famous after this. That's cool. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. I, so, you know, it, it, I kind of, I've, that's kind of been thinking about you as, as you were sitting there and uh, I wonder what, what at work was kind of happening. And it, it just, yeah. you know, you hear, and it's just amazing how this world's working. But, yeah. So you think frequent frequent shoppers at Cabela's. So a lot of people know, and Cody and I both work in Cabela's. A lot of people know, you know, Josh and Sarah are related to Cody, and so they've all been asking me, you know, 
what's, what's going, going on? on? Like, have you talked to him? You know? And uh, I personally have not. I know Cody sent Josh a text, like, back. It was, like, the first or second day. Things were really blowing up, just kind of supporting him. Like, hey, man, sorry about what's going on. And Josh said, thanks for the support. I really appreciate it, and it'll all blow over. I, I, I think he's right. Yeah. And so you're going to hear my take in the next segment. So. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah, well. I, like, <laughs> Dan gone wild. Nah, not really. It's, I've kind of thought about it. And yeah. you, you sit, like Mike said, you think about it on it a while. Mm-hmm. But you got to kind of step back and look mm-hmm. at it. And, and we covered a lot just talking in these few minutes here. We've, we've yeah, covered exactly. a lot of it, and, so. But to get your take on, a, sure. on almost a personal level. Is right, just, right. That is, yeah. You know, without how, you know, being really close as you are right. to that situation and, and right. kind of seeing the family side of behind it, mm-hmm. what's going on mm-hmm. in the family. So, mm-hmm. but uh, other than that, I think um, do you got anything else you want to talk about on the you Under Armour saga? No, I, I no, think, you think I, you're good. I, yeah, I think we're we're pretty right. good. It's starting to rain here again. So. Yeah, it is starting to rain here at Bowfest, but uh, so we'll do it. That'll do it for this segment, and uh, stay tuned. And we'll be back uh, in the next segment. And we'll be back from Spot Shooters. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Mara Dougherty here with Up North Journal, still at the 10th annual Bowfest at Spot Shooter Archery here in Holly, Michigan. Uh, I just kind of went off on my personal take of the Under Armour incident on a personal level. Um, but sitting here in the rain with Danny, we are going to get his take on it. So what what is your take on it? From- well, first of all, Mike's still gone, and he left us with the microphones. Oh, yeah, that is true. So we're still in charge. Yes, we are in charge. <laughs> But anyways, okay, so what's my take on this whole Under Armour thing? All right, first thing I'd like to say is that thinking about this, and especially now that we're two weeks into this little saga that's yep. going on about, mm-hmm. and um, it, kind of a twofold thing. First of all, I am so glad to see a lot of the hunters, first of all, knowing that it was taken legally, it was done with all behind all the rules that are stated in Alberta, mm-hmm. how to do it, it was done that way. And that investigation is over. That There was an article out on that, that the, the Canadian, S, in, whatever they were doing, the research they were doing to make sure everything was legal, it has come out that it is sure in fact okay. legal, and there are no charges going to be pressed. Okay. So that so did come out. With that being said, I, I am very impressed with the amount of support that I've seen from fellow hunters. Absolutely. You know, I can agree on that. When 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 something happens in uh, whether it be family, whether it be in this case the hunting family, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was wrong for Under Armour to go and drop which in in essence the associate who the the, the person that was actually running the camera only. Right. Uh, to, to to make a, a snap judgment to me uh, that says, "Hey, yes, we don't support you anymore. We're dropping you." Mm-hmm. Um that to me, to my understanding, it was because of the pressure they were receiving through social media from probably anti hunters. Right, and there were said, petition, online petitions. Yeah, there was. And, a, it only had like three thousand signatures in that pe- yeah. petition. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and all of a sudden they come out, they go ahead on a Friday morning, drop her, and say we're done with her. And, and not to, it seemed harsh. It seemed fast. It did. And it, it was like really. Yeah. And so. So after that, I was like, all right, 
so I, I at first he's like, all right, let's see what happens. And right. all of a sudden, you see the support start. Mm-hmm. People got online. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you saw the Under Armour logo with a red X through it, and the whole nine yep. yards starting. Yep. People, people started burning. burning. Yes. Um, yes. That uh, stuff went viral. I've seen other companies jump on board and says, hey, we don't stand behind the hunters. We stand with the hunters, yep. which I think is really cool. That is, yeah. Um, so on that standpoint, as a hunting group, I am very happy to see the support behind them against Under Armour. Sure. Okay. And, I mean, and, and Under Armour dropped them without the official in- investigations being completed. Okay, that's the, was, uh, well, that goes that that's exactly right. They 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 go ahead instead of saying, "Hey, there's an investigation into sure. it. Let's let's wait sure. and see." Because by Friday morning, they knew that Canada was investigating and potentially if if there was illegal acts, you know, done, they were going to press charges and they were threatening Josh. And so with none of that proven, how can you just up and leave i just i don't get it drop them like a rock yeah seriously exactly so so with that being said i think me personally as a company in, in, instead of being like that they should have stepped back and said you know what there's an investigation we're gonna hold off on anything we say until the inf- investigation is done exactly that's and then, what they should have done i think you're right so I, and but they didn't so right. they did not and they right. end up dropping her they dropped sarah Unfortunately, who was just a camera person, and and basically, to my to my heart felt, she put her blood and guts and everything into this mm-hmm. to get this to go with Under Armour to get a sponsor, to do what she does, and they they, they basically kick the feet out from underneath her and says we're out of here. Yeah, and to me, it it just something's not right there. So I, I'm I'm again saying. As hunters, we got to stick together and, and make it to a point where it says uh, Under Armour, re- they really didn't care about the hunters. They didn't. They, they just they, want money. Yeah. Now, there you go. <laughs> that, that, to me, that's where this is all leading to. I mean. So now, okay, so that is on the hunter's side of it. Hey, it was done totally legal. And she was just a camera person. So why are you actually picking on her right. that says you did wrong? Right. But no, she didn't. She just videotaped it. Yeah. But she paid the, the consequences for it. So, but, but like anyways. Firing somebody from, like, fire, like say a coworker of your get fired because they were investigating. Like, what did you have to do with it? Right. Other than work in the same you're guilty by aso- you're, Exactly. It's you're like, guilty by association. I, just, I cannot wrap my mind around why they even thought that it was okay. Right. And it, you just sit there and so this all brewed over a weekend i mm-hmm. mean it was like on fire so mm-hmm. me and mike talked about it we talked about it off off air and we talked about it on the phone sure and uh now taking a look at it from a, a a business side of it because i asked you in the last segment what about all these other these other uh, the ones that are sponsored by under armor yes and they've been fairly quiet about the yep. whole thing uh, I mean, some have spoken but some have come out. Uh, Why do you think that is? Why do you think? I know you kind of asked me the same thing. I asked you the same question. I wanted to hear your answer because it, it, it's almost going to be sounding the same. Okay. Because yeah. we're on the same page here. Yeah, we're on the same page because we're in the industry. Mm-hmm. And, and anybody that's in an industry that has contracts and obligations, and you you have to, as a person, me, you, if you sign a contract, you should uh, uphold the contract yes. and, and follow it and yes. do what needs to be done. I'm sure that that's the case of some of the situation here. Uh, now, also, you're looking at where are you getting your money from. Right. Now, there might be some ramifications down the road. There could be. We don't know. This there is totally, be. you know, maybe there's some things behind the scenes that some of these groups are saying, you know what, at the end of our contract, maybe we're out of here. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if there's stock drops or if, you know, if sales go down. Well, that, or, that's the whole. You know, in you a know, year from now, where are they, I mean. Yeah. It, it, where are they, they going to be? You know what I, I mean? I get a feeling you're going to see a dip in probably their hunting sales. Right. For yeah. this year. Yeah. I don't think any of their athletic apparel. I think that'll that'll still, you know. I, I think, tell you the truth, you're going to see a dip in hunting sales this year. Yeah. But as, as, as it goes through the the months and whatnot, sure. uh, you 
they'll they'll either come back or they'll stay steady where they're at, yeah. and that'll be it. Yeah, that that's my personal take mm-hmm. on it. Uh, as a as a business, and anybody anybody has an inkling that they're looking at, at the Under Armour name knows how big this company is. Yeah, they're so huge. So the hunting line is minute. Right. To so, everything else that they do. So to lose it actually would I I don't think it would hurt their bottom line too much. I don't think it would either. And. Uh, but what this has what this has shown is there's been a couple of other people in the industry that have come out and kind of said I su- I'm okay with Under Armour because uh, they might be a friend. Sure. And it's like okay, but you got to understand what they did to, to one of our brothers in the hunting industry. Seriously, yeah. Right. And so I mean, and I've seen that and it's one of those things um Personally, like you said, I think it's going to just uh, end up, there's going to be, especially for this season, because it's going to be fresh in everybody's mind. Yeah. Uh, let us go through next year and see what happens. If right. there's a, will it blow over? I'm pretty sure. Right. That, that it'll, like everything else, with time, things just, on they, kinda on they go. They kind of yeah. And I wonder if, if uh, you know, if Under Armour Hunt is still going strong and, for future sponsorships, you know, I wonder if people will will second guess whether they want to pick Under Armour. That's a very good question. Up as a sponsor or not, you know, and if I, if they're thinking about anything that had to do with Sarah, you know, they don't want to be dropped like that. Right? If something just were to think, happen. You're, you're, you're you're thinking about going into a contract with a yeah. company. You're, you're all of a sudden in the back of your mind, that could start playing head games, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow! If I sign up, but if I if if I'm just running a camera, right? Or I, I take a picture do, of something. Do, yeah, do one thing that. Some are people they going to drop like. me? Yeah. You know, it would definitely cross my mind if I was in that situation. Absolutely. So it's going to be interesting to know how this all plays out. Mm-hmm. But personally, uh, I'm 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 excited to see hunting, the hunting community get together. Yep. And say no. I kind of like the idea. If, if you if you if you are upset with Under Armour to the point, don't burn your clothes. Do us a favor, donate them. Yes. I like that idea a lot. You yes. know, donate them and then let's just uh, get them to people in need, and don't burn them. Yep. And it, we that'll help out a lot better. So. It will. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see uh, your take. We know my take. Uh, I wonder I've what got, Mike will have to say. It is going to be interesting what Mike yeah. has to say, uh, what he's going to say, and we all know where Mike can go. Mm-hmm. Who knows where? Off on a tangent. Yeah, it'll be a <laughs> tangent of some sort. But, um, yeah, I. Ah. so that's my take on it yep. in, in a way. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see that the hunting community, and this, it's kind of like the NRA and our Second Amendment. They, you you got to yeah. stick with the people, yeah. and you got to back them, and mm-hmm. you got to show them that mm-hmm. because – if you don't, you, you, at the first sign of trouble, when you turn and tuck tail, sure. so to speak, it kind of makes you wonder. It does. It absolutely does. So, uh, you know, I was just, it was one of those things that just, it it shocked me after a while. So It did. And it was just so surreal. I know I've already said my point of view, but it was surreal, really, seeing two people that I know on a personal level go viral crazy and all that hate i mean and backing that they were getting it was just crazy it was, to me. okay so let's talk about that a little bit did you see any of the facebook postings on, on, on the under armor facebook i did i did and there were also actual facebook did you see any of the facebook groups made about josh the ones that were no like, shun the bear killer murderer like it was crazy people were setting up like gofundme accounts to hire a cage fight, really? a cage fighter to fight Josh. People were trying to make money for this and like what? raise money, raise money so they could pay somebody to beat Josh up over what, what he did. What goes through people's <laughs> minds? I you don't know. know. I, some of the comments I've seen on, on Facebook, and this is a, the wonders of social media, it's instantaneous, that the threats, right. the... the Little the, keyboard warriors. Yeah, exactly. It's like really. <laughs> I know. I. I mean, I seriously was cracking up when I when I just Google or you know typed into the Facebook search Josh Bomar and the pages that were coming really? up. Really? Do it. They're probably still up. I mean, <laughs> oh, there was PayPal's and GoFundMe's to hire a cage fighter to beat him up. <laughs> that, that amazes me. It, it, I don't know, but I. I I'm like, I, isn't there something? I mean, if you're against hunting and you don't like it, I'm like, why don't you? 
you know exactly so pay for conservation or something with that stupid money you're right, trying exactly. to raise like you come know, on. it's like <laughs> use your head you want to hire a cage fighter but you can be there, paying I'm, for national parks and all that kind of stuff or like, something <laughs> totally better than that right i'm just right. like go by oh, like no. but like you know. said the keyboard warriors were i mean they were hot and heavy they about were. and it was like really people i know you really want to do that or, or call people that names thought we were raised a little bit better yeah but, you the, know i think the immaturity kind of showed through in a lot of people and the biggest problem i think with the entire thing is people that are uneducated they see something they don't like and they automatically assume well, because to persuade a lot of people that hunting is an ethical thing to do whether you do it with a spear or bow or gun or what have you is very hard people that you know persuasion being a communication major i've learned is one of the one of the hardest speeches to give because it is hard to get people to change their minds right and that's another thing that um not knowing the whole story yes the, they the, were jumping to conclusions they, before investigations were complete yes they get the they get the, the the five minute blurb of right and it's like oh well that's in articles that were written that w- didn't even have quotes okay. from Josh or anything like that they didn't get and, Josh's side and did you hear about that Josh was actually at Sarah's little sister's birthday party when that first main viral article was being written and they tried to get a hold of Josh and he said I'll get back to you in a little bit for some quotes I am at my my wife's little sister's birthday party and they didn't wait for him and they went ahead and published it anyways and then they went back in and edited it and put a few of his quotes at the at the bottom where by that time anti-hunters who are reading it they've already got their minds made up and it just made josh just out to seem like a horrible person exactly that was that 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 first story came out was totally you could tell the way it was written yeah Um, and they took and ran with that. They did. And then they brought the quotes in, and it's like, yeah. wait, whoa, whoa, But they didn't get the whole story. Exactly. And they don't, they, and yeah. it's almost like they didn't want to hear the rest of the story They anyways, didn't. They because didn't. Because it was just one of those things. They didn't things. care. They just no. wanted to bash this guy. They did, and they attacked him, and mm-hmm. then they went right after Under Armour. Mm-hmm. And the part I don't get, and maybe this was some homework done by somebody, you know, why go after Sarah? Why go after Sarah? I don't know. Under Armour. That still boggles me. It was. I, I couldn't tell you on that one. If if Josh was sponsored, okay, maybe right. because the antis are are bigger, you know, income for him. We keep. I know we keep going back to biz, big business and numbers, but Sarah, she didn't have anything to do with it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, and like, but we're gonna take her down anyway. Right. Right. But yeah, it was just one of those things. And I tell you what, it was. It's 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 been interesting a it couple has. Of weeks it that uh, I. I think it'll be the typical, it'll be forgotten, it like will. Cecil, like you it said, will. like Cecil. It'll but blow over. But I just hope it's, it's, I think it might be a help in our direction mm-hmm. that says, hey, if, if we can stick together. Sure. Another thing that really gets me, another one of my opinions is, okay, spear oh, hunting. Here we go, everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> spear Brace hunting, yourself. Spear hunting is not for me. Right. I've never done it. Right. Never tried it. Right. Never practiced it. So I'm not going to go out and do it. Right. He was an experienced javelin thrower. And it, so he's been throwing spears forever. There you go. <laughs> so, he practiced with yeah. his weapon. So as a hunter, I say, okay. Right. You, you, you did your homework. You did your, your practicing right. with it. Go ahead. It was a legal form. Right. Don't, I'm not going to knock him for that. Exactly. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, I don't like it. Blah, blah, blah. Right. If it was illegal, it would have changed the, you know, everything completely. Right. What Ex- they did. But Ex- it was perfectly legal. And that's where I and so many other guys and girls in the outdoor industry have a problem. Exactly. And it's it just. The bottom line. I just shake legal. my head and it was like, it was a legal form. Right. That, but, Whether right? you like it or not, it was legal. Exactly. But there's been some hunters. Facebook warriors, as you call yep, them, yep, get out warriors. there, give us their two cents, and ah, he's unethical, blah, blah. Right. What did they do way back before they even had spears? They probably clubbed them to death. Yeah, or beat them with a rock. Yeah. So. I mean, seriously. If it was legal then? <laughs> you know, right. it, it's just, really? Right. Are you are you killing me over this? Right. So, but that's you. my take on it. So. We it's kind of fun to rant. 
Oh, it is. I tell you, this, <laughs> this is, the is best like a part. different kind of like podcast. I kind of like it. Oh, this. Is, yeah, we we get it, we go off on these tangents. Yeah. It's fun. Oh, yeah. this, this, this has been in the making. Sure. And with you being it's a up lot different while, than an interview. Oh, it is. Sure. It's just <laughs> let your mind go. Yeah. So. Right. right. But with that, I think we'll go ahead. We'll end this segment of the podcast yeah. and uh, stay tuned for our last segment from Mike when we get his opinion. Absolutely. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's Decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. All right, back for the last segment of the show. Still outside. It has stopped raining so far. Yes, it has, and I'm back. Um, you took over the show. Mara and I took over two segments of the show. Did you leave me any time to talk? A little bit. Okay. And you know what? She said she liked ranting. She liked ranting? Yeah, it was It was good. It must be a redhead thing. It, it is. <laughs> you, it's you it's nice. Here. It's not like a typical interview. <laughs> but this last segment, we're going to turn it over to to the famous godfather for his take on the Under Armour saga. But I'm going to step out and let Mara take over my last spot, and you guys can have it. Where are you going? I'm. Hey, you left. I I'm was leaving. busy working. I'm in here selling bows. I, I'm leaving, too. Actually, I, I, uh, I got a customer on a bow over here. All right, good. But before I leave, a few things. I want to thank Cabela's. Absolutely. Uh, Cabela's provided us with the archery game. Uh, safe archery, the, the safe archery game, and uh, I think the kids have liked it, in the the older kids as well. Yeah, the older kids. Yeah, and okay, I'm gonna say it right here. <laughs> All right, Mara beat me again. <laughs> she is still the reigning champion. <laughs> Good. Uh, I want to thank Cabela's for giving us the tables, the table covers. Uh, shout out to the 4-H Wildcats. They provided some good food today. Provided some good food. Uh, Jerry Lambert absolutely had his books out here. Yeah. Uh, Water and books were kind of not mixing well. Yeah, he had to take off a little early. Yeah, he took off. Uh, Mark Hammer. Yeah. Is that not a beautiful buck or what? Always is. I still marvel at it every time I see it. Absolutely. So, uh, and don't forget his antler action. And antler action. Which uh, we're going to be running in the field this year. We are, so stay yep. tuned for that. But with that, and I'm going to. Jason Meekoff from oh, uh, Backcountry. Well, yeah, we're, we're sitting at his table. Yeah, don't you can't forget Jason, man. <gasps> Come on. She's no. hitting me. I'll hit you, too. Oh, great. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks to all those for being under the Up North Journal tent. Yeah. Uh, good we had a tent. Absolutely, yeah. It was a good thing today because everybody came over here when it started raining. As everybody else is crowding under their little 10 by 10s, we had, what is this, 20 by 40? This is 20 by 30. 20 by 30. Nice size tent. Uh, very comfortable, spacious, and dry. And dry. <laughs> so, with that, I'm going to give my mic to Mara, and you guys can end the show. All right. Get out of here. I'm out of here. Make like a tree and leave. All right, Mike, now we can actually start the show now that I'm uh, Okay, here. yeah, all right. Back to the first segment <laughs> of the show. <laughs> all right, I want to know what he said about me, first of all. Hey, you might not want to know. <laughs> Every time he, I leave, he is always saying bad things about me. <laughs> sure. So. Okay, so Danny and I have talked about our point of views of this whole Under Armour, Josh and Sarah Bomar incident. Uh-huh. Um, what's your take on it? What was your gut reaction when you saw this stuff going viral? Uh... When I seen what, okay, explain what you mean by seeing stuff going viral. What, what part initially, are we about? like initially, that first article that came out about Josh Bomar, you know, man brutally spears bear. It and, was uh, yellow journalism. It was, uh, I call it chicken manure. Yep. That's putting it. Yep. Putting it nicely. Yep. Journalism, anti uh, haunted sure. journalism. It, it was a, a direct attack on, it was. on uh, a legal, ethical, clean kill. Um, mm-hmm. 
I have no problem with the video. I, I thought it was pretty cool, actually. Um, sure. Now, get, getting into the video portion, I mean, because that's, that's kind of where my heart and soul is, before we even get into the rest of the discussion. I've done a lot of thinking this week and last week and talked to a couple of people. And actually, <laughs> there was a very well-known person in the hunting industry that came out this week, and we have the video posted on our site. It was actually bad-mouthing people, saying we need to watch out with our GoPros of what we're shooting and releasing. We have a responsibility to not put certain things out there. And, and I, I want to put a disclaimer on myself real quick here. Um, I do have hunting video of kills that I have not released because I have personally thought they were too graphic. Sure. Um, that that was my my own take on what uh, on my own video. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't think it added anything to what we were trying to do. But for me to sit there and tell somebody else you shouldn't show something because it may be too, I have no place in saying that. That that's that's censorship. It you know, and, and we shouldn't be telling people we shouldn't those no. things. Um, I thought the guy who said that and go over and look. I mean, I'm. I'm not going to start calling people out on the show, but go over and look on our Facebook page. You can see exactly who it was. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't think there's any place for that. You know, if, you, if you've got a clean ethical kill, and if it's a little gory, then go and you want to show it, show it. Right. Um, I chose to hold ours back because I thought it was a little over the top, and that was my own personal choice just for what I do. Right. And a lot of, Danny and I kept referring to, bottom line, whether you support it or not, you know, hunting in general or just spear hunting, you know, it was legal. Yeah. I know people, I, a guy that lives within less than 10 miles from my house mm -hmm. has speared five or six bears. Sure. Um, lean, or clean, legal, ethical kills. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he doesn't go around bragging about it or anything like that. But, right. But it's, right. It's, it, he's done it. He's able to do it. And I have no problem with it. Uh, there, there's types of hunting out there that... I might not participate in for my own reasons, but right. as long as it's a legal way of hunting and it's ethical, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have no problem with it. I mean, and, and Josh practiced and practiced and practiced with that mm -hmm. spear. I mean, he practiced for years. He used to be a javelin thrower. Yeah. So he wasn't, yep. you know, new to this. This is. It wasn't me, like me picking up a, a, a spear right. and going out and going, hey, I want to try this. Right. And so in my eyes, you know, he, he respected that bear enough mm -hmm. so that he practiced and practiced and practiced so that he could make yep. an ethical kill yep yep and you know i think the big the, let's, let's take this a step further is we're now um our team sponsorships and things of that nature are dependent upon who you're running camera for i mean because right. the, the whole issue really boils down to the fact this this company dropped Sarah because she was running camera. Mm -hmm. had, she, had she not been a part of that hunt, it would have been a moot point, and we we wouldn't have been in this situation. Right. They wouldn't have batted an eye on it. But you, you're going, you know, and I, I've heard from, from two different people in the same same day or, or same week, I think it's the same day, there, there's there's a lot more behind this story than meets the eye in that they, they were excited about getting the video. Um, they and were. That, and I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, we've seen a lot of things written, and then but the fact is, if you're, if you're going to take something and say, yeah, go get them, that's cool, and then turn around in the public eye and say, uh, we're going to let you go because we think that's over the top, you know, that's that's just, that's chicken manure. It's kind of a stab in the back. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, we, we interviewed David uh, Strandberg last week from Numa Outdoors, and uh, you know, he said it best. He said, you know, not only are they going to, they're not going to stand behind hunters, they're going to stand beside them. Right. You know. You stand behind somebody, yeah, we all know what that means, but they're going to stand right there beside you and, and take that, take whatever flack's coming our way right there with you, not not stand behind them and let the and, hunters and take that. Right. Yeah, right. so, you know, and that's what we need to do uh, as hunters stick together and stand beside each other. And there's controversy even in this, even between hunters, you know, whether yeah. you hunt with a rifle yeah. or a bow or a crossbow or a recurve or yep. a long whatever we're all on the same team and i know yep. there's been memes and stuff like that made yep. on facebook that we've shared on the up north journal page but it's true yep. hunting is hunting it is and whether it's hunting fishing trapping yeah. um w whatever it is in the outdoors wh whether you're, you're taking uh the life of an animal 
in whatever way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, we're right. right there with you guys. We stand behind you, and that's just where we're at. You know, right. I, I got into it with somebody a little bit on Facebook about um, they wanted Cabela's to uh, to answer for this and, and get Under Armour out of their store, and I'm like, you know, you're, you're taking it a step too far here. Um, when you start going after retailers because of a product line, you know, this will shake out. It will. The hunters the hunters will either buy it or they won't. And, right. if, and if they don't, it won't be in the store next year. Exactly. Um, and Dan and I talked a lot about that, you know, whether their numbers are going to drop. But yeah. uh, compared to Under Armour as a whole, we've Dan and I have said this, but Under Armour Hunt is minuscule. It is. Compared to it what is. they do. I All mean, they did is dip their toe in the water. Seriously, yeah. So it, it's not, that's why they took a chance. You know, they'd yeah. rather make the mass is happy yep. than those hunters. You know, and, and from their standpoint, I don't like it, but I understand why right. they did what they from did. From a business point of view, yeah. yes. But that, you know what? We as hunters and outdoorsmen and women need to be looking at companies that have their core base product or value within the hunting industry. We don't need to be looking at companies that, that come in from the outside looking in saying, hey, we're going to get part of that pie. You know, we can make a buck out of, you know, yep. doing this. Yep, yeah, by riding their back. That's so. exactly right. But, yeah, uh, the mom and pop companies that start in the industry and mm-hmm. stay in the industry is what yep. we need to be supporting. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, support your retailers. You know, if, if it's like I told this guy, is you know, did you quit shopping at Cabela's when the muck boot fiasco came up? Right. You know, and he kind of went, huh? I go, okay, see, yeah, right he, there. Yeah, he didn't even know. Didn't yeah. even know about mm-hmm. that. So to sit there and, and start going after retailers, I mean, where are where you, you, you going to draw the line at? I mean, we're not going to shop at any of the department stores because that sell sell this gear as well. Sure. Um, you know, any of the other big box uh, hunting retailers, uh, you, you're going to have to go back and start making your own clothing, you know? Seriously, <laughs> yeah. It, if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. Right. You know, and that's that's where we drew the line, you know, for us here at Up North Journal. We're not gonna We're not going to buy it. We're going to stand with the hunters and, uh, you know, and support Sarah uh, for, for the fact that she get, she got, I think she got stabbed in the back. She did. So. She absolutely did. So I didn't hear what you guys had to say too much about it. So I'm Yeah, you were you were off making working. a bow sale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, it'll be interesting when you listen. I think you'll you'll agree with a lot of the stuff we said. You know, my, my biggest take is we got we to gotta stand by each other. Mm-hmm. Um, quit stabbing each other in the back. Stand up for each other when we're out there, and uh, if you got something you want to put out there on Facebook, as long as it's clean and ethical, put it out there. Sure. Um, you know, and if you don't want to, you know, then then don't. It's it's not that big a deal. But uh, let's let's rally the troops, circle the wagons, and absolutely. Uh, let's keep things at home where it needs to be, and take care of our own. You know. Yep. And any any hunting or fishing or trapping, like you said, anything if it's legal. Yep. Let it happen. Your personal opinions, mm-hmm. yeah, you might not like it, but it's if if laws are not being broken mm-hmm. and animals are not being you know neglected and yep. you know then i don't understand why that why people have such a big problem well I mean, the antis are coming and it's like how do you eat an elephant you do it one bite at a time you start with something that's controversial and before you know it they're they're on to us for for uh, you know shooting deer you know sure and at that point you know if it gets to that point it, it's all over so you know, they've already outlawed a lot of bear hunting over in New Jersey. I, I'm yep. not sure, but I think Connecticut. I know they're having bear problems right now. I was talking yep. on Facebook with somebody about that. Um, they're after trapping uh, certain bear species. They're after. They don't want you know bringing polar bear back in from uh, up in the Arctic Circle. Mm-hmm. So, and we all know what happened with poor Cecil. Yeah, Danny and I <laughs> yeah. talked about that a little bit about yeah. it, whether you. Th- I mean, we think the whole thing's going to blow over, and yeah. he asked me that, and I said, absolutely. I mean, Cecil did. Yeah, there's people still out there yeah. that are mad, but right. you don't see the crazy stuff on Facebook like we did yeah. back when that happened. So, I think it will. You know, the embers will settle. The thing that really amazes me, and, and I do have to give credit where credit is due, is that the antis, they react quickly. And they react loudly and with a, with a vengeance, and they get their point across. They do. And I will give them that. You know, if if the hunting industry rallied around each other, and, and not just the industry, but the hunters themselves and the outdoors men and women, if we reacted the same way, with the same voice and vigor that they do, then I tell you what, th- there'd be no stopping us. Uh, there absolutely wouldn't yeah. be. So. Uh-uh. Yeah, I agree. So, all right, well... That's that's pretty much my take on it. Um, yeah, you know, I, think I don't know if I added a whole lot from what you guys. You were did. About. You added a lot about the video standpoint, which we didn't talk about. We were talking more, you know, about the act that Under Armour did and why we thought it was bogus. But right. 
So yeah, you did add a, lo- a lot of new stuff. I know Danny and I c- agreed on everything and and talked about a lot of the same thing. But. And, and one one last thing is I see there's a lot of people out there, and even I kind of jumped in on it a little bit. People are, are going to burn their Under Armour, yeah, you know, and they're making videos now. Mm-hmm. You know what? Don't burn it. Send it down to Louisiana where those folks down there are hurting right Absolutely. now. They need clothing, and you know, as bad as I hate to say it, I mean, the stuff's already bought and paid for. So you know, send it somewhere where it can be used and uh, put to good use. Absolutely. All right, well, that'll do it for us this week, folks, and we'll be back again next week. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.